Hey everyone, my name is Robert Gonzalez and I am the Marketing Technology and Web Development Manager here at DD. Today we'll be taking a look at HubSpot's marketing email tool. We'll be covering how to manage your emails, how to create and edit emails using custom templates and HubSpot's drag and drop editor, and how to test your emails so they look good for all of your users across all your devices. Let's get started. <music> First, let's take a look at the email tool's main interface where you can review, organize, and manage your emails. To get to your email tool, go to the marketing tab in the main navigation and select email. Once there, you'll realize we are in the manage tab. The analyze tab will explore in our video about HubSpot analytics tools. In this main interface, there are a lot of ways in which you can organize and filter your emails so that they are easily accessible when you return to the tool later. In the top left corner, you'll find a tab for folders from there, you can either create a new custom folder or you can click into an existing folder to see the emails contained within it. In order to move emails into a folder, simply select one or more emails, click move, and then select the folder you'd like to move them into. Also, when selecting one or more emails, you'll have the option to delete those emails or archive them. Speaking of which, on the left-hand side of the list view, you'll find a set of filters that allow you to filter by email state. By default, it's set to all emails, not including archived. But you can switch the filter to only show you emails still being drafted, scheduled to be sent in the future, already sent, or emails you have opted to archive. Below that, you'll find a More Tools dropdown that will allow you to manage your contacts who have bounced or unsubscribed from all email. In the main email area, you will find a list of emails you've created along with several columns of high-level data about how each email performed. You can adjust these columns to include more or less data points by simply selecting Edit Columns and either adding or removing certain fields. In the same toolbar, you will also find options to search for an email, export email data, and filter emails by type or campaign. Now that you know how to manage emails, let's discuss how to create and edit new emails. There are several ways to do this, including editing existing emails and cloning emails. We're gonna be creating an email from scratch since it shows you the full range of tools available to you while building out your email. There are also several types of emails that you can make and they all play their own role in your overall marketing strategy. Let's take a look. In order to edit or clone an existing email, you would simply hover over the email and click one of these two buttons. But we are going to click the orange button here in order to create a new email. From there, you would be prompted to choose one of three email types, regular, automated, or blog RSS. Regular emails are usually one-off emails sent to a predetermined list of people at a set day and time. Automated emails, on the other hand, will be published and placed inside of a workflow where users will receive the email once they reach a certain action criteria. We cover this in a separate video. Blog and RSS emails are usually sent to users whenever you publish a blog that they subscribe to. We also cover this in another video. Today, though, we'll be creating regular emails. Next, you'll need to select either a custom template or a drag and drop template. Each template has its advantages and drawbacks. And depending on the type and complexity of the email you want to create, you'll find that one is often better than the other. Generally, custom email templates are better for simpler one column layouts, while the drag and drop editor might be better for a more complex, varied layout. Let's start with custom. You can use the filters or the search bar to find the template you're looking for. We are going to select our first template option and give it a quick title. Once inside the email, you'll find that we are in the Edit tab, and this is where we'll be doing most of the work. Starting at the top is the Email Details section. This is where you'll insert your name, your from address, subject line, and optionally preview text. You can also personalize the subject line and preview text with personalization tokens to include things like the user's name to give a more personal touch. Below that, you'll find the main email body. Clicking into it, you should see this toolbar containing a set of word processing tools and options to insert images, 
CTAs, tables, personalization tokens, and even emojis. All the content here is fully customizable. And should you make any mistakes, simply click the hamburger icon to view your revision history and revert back to an earlier point in time. On the left-hand side, you'll find several tools for testing your email. The top tool is used to preview what your email will look like on different device types or in your browser. And this tool is used to see what your emails will look like in different browsers and email clients. This tool though is used to actually send test emails to yourself or others, and this is the most accurate way to determine if your email looks good across all email clients, browsers, and operating systems. This tool contains suggested ways you can optimize your emails, and this one is simply the layout of your email template. Lastly, we have the AB testing tool, but that deserves a video of its own. Now let's take a look at the settings tab here you have options to rename your email, assign the email to a campaign, and select a subscription type. Subscription type is especially important because in theory it will determine what your users may unsubscribe or subscribe to. You wouldn't want your users to accidentally unsubscribe from event information when really they were trying to unsubscribe from a particular blog. Next is the recipients tab. Here's where you can include or exclude lists of contacts you've created as well as include or exclude individual contacts in your database. Were this an automated email, you would not have to select any lists at all. Here, you can also choose to include or exclude contacts that HubSpot has deemed as unengaged. Finally, we have the review tab. This is where you can double check that you've done everything properly before moving on to the send or schedule tab, where you can either send the email now, schedule it for later, or schedule it based on your user's time zones. Once you feel that everything is complete, simply click the schedule now or send now buttons. Lastly today, we're going to be going over the drag and drop email editor, which has all of the same features as the custom email editor with a few extras that you might just find that they are in different locations. To get started, go ahead and create another regular email and then select a basic drag and drop template. Once inside the editor, the biggest change you'll probably notice is the large editor pane on the left-hand side. In the content tab, you can add more content sections such as images or CTAs, as well as different layouts by simply dragging and dropping the items into the email. However, keep in mind that the drag and drop email editor does not let you insert images or CTAs directly into a text section. If you want text on either side of an image or CTA, you'll have to sandwich that module between two text modules. In the design tab, you'll have complete control over how your email is styled in the way that the custom email editor doesn't allow. You can change your background color or body color, your text styles, including the fonts or font sizes or colors, button styles, and finally, the dividers. The downside to this feature is that the email does not take on your account default email styles, which you can find under settings, marketing, and then email. This means you may need to reset your styles every time you make a new drag and drop email, which is the main reason you might find yourself using the traditional email editor over the drag and drop. You can circumvent this by cloning old drag and drop emails that already have the styles in place that you want, but this may not always be reasonable. The last feature available is here, and it's a quick way to easily undo an edit you've just made. The revision history option still exists, but it's hiding inside of the save link here. The remaining features of the email editor are exactly the same, but like the revision history, where they are located has changed in some cases. The send test email now exists here. The options to preview your email on different devices, browsers, and email clients now lives here. And all of your email details are now under the settings tab, along with your email name, subscription type, and campaign. The AB testing option now lives under settings as well. Finally, we have our recipients options under the send or schedule tab on the left, and the actual send or schedule options on the right. And that'll do it for the HubSpot email editor tool. 
Please feel free to leave your questions in the comments down below and check the description for additional resources. We hope to see you next time.